and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Page, Page, 79. Page 79. Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought or in deed, by, by what we have done and by what we, we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your grace. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Please join with me on page 82 with the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all of you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with the song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And to his gates with thanksgiving, go into the courts of praise. Give thanks to him and all on his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness he works his faith. Continue with Psalm, reading a portion of Psalm 116 uh, that is found on page 759. Page 759. We begin with verse 10 and read to the end of the psalm. <coughs> Together. How shall I thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon me in the Lord. I will open up my house to the Lord and present all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the sight of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you sacrifices of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the doors of the Lord's house, in the midst of the people of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from 2 Corinthians. While we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life is in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. 
Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what we cannot see is eternal. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We will continue with Canticle 11, found on page 87. The third song of Isaiah. Together. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is out of mind. For people are us of this land. He who shall be lost, but only you, the Lord, will rise, and his glory will appear in your mind. Nations will spring to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. Your beauty will always be open, by day and night, and they will never shut. They will call you the truth of the day of the Lord, the sign of the Lord, the Lord's strength. Violence will no more be heard in your land. This morning we are honoring the Episcopal Saint who holds the record for the longest name. <laughs> His name is Samuel Isaac Joseph Cheshwishki. We're going to call him Samuel this morning. <laughs> Samuel was born in 1831 to Orthodox Jewish parents in Russian Lithuania. His parents died when he was a small boy, and he was raised by his half-brother. 
The family was apparently pretty well to do as he was able to receive an excellent education. At home, he spoke Yiddish. At school, he spoke Russian and Polish, and he studied Hebrew and Aramaic. At 15, he went away to a Jewish boarding school where he was introduced to Christianity when a classmate gave him a New Testament translated in Hebrew. At 19, he began training to become a rabbi in Germany, where he quickly learned German. It was through contact with missionaries that his conversion towards Christianity continued. At 23, he decided to emigrate to America. This was in 1854, just not that far before the Civil War. And he began meeting other Jews who had become Christians. <coughs> he was baptized when he attended a Baptist church. And later he became a Presbyterian and sensing a call to ministry, attended a Presbyterian seminary. Now he became troubled with Calvinist theology and he withdrew, turning to the Episcopal Church where he continued to feel a call to ministry. He began attending General Theological Seminary in New York and within the first six months of school, he heard Bishop Boone speak at the seminary, issuing an appeal to men to become missionaries in China. So he applied to become a missionary and he was accepted. He believed his calling was to translate the Bible into the Chinese language. In July, 1859, he was ordained a deacon and a week later left with Bishop Boone for China. It was indeed a slow boat to China, as the journey took them six months. But during that time, he learned to speak and write Chinese fluently. He was ordained a priest within his first year in China, where he had already begun translating the Psalms and the Book of Common Prayer. He was in a translation group with other men where he was asked to translate the entire Old Testament kind of based on his experience of being Jewish and being very fluent in Hebrew. He was also asked to translate Matthew, Hebrews, and Revelations in the New Testament, and morning and evening prayer, all the collects and the Psalms in the Book of Common Prayer. At age 37, he married Susan Mary Warning, who had arrived in China as a missionary from New York. They supported each other in their ministry for the rest of their lives, and together they raised a son and a daughter. Now he, empl he employed two Chinese copyists, people that would be able to write all of the Chinese characters. One of them was for the day, and the other one came to work after dinner and worked until Samuel was finished, no, light, no earlier than 10 o'clock, but quite often until two o'clock the next morning. I have a feeling his wife was the one who did most of the raising of the children. <laughs> when his project was complete, Samuel, Susan, and their children returned to the United States. They spoke endlessly in churches, seminaries, and other venues about the need for missionaries in China. Now, in 1875, when we were back in the United States, there was a special meeting of the House of Bishops. They determined they needed a bishop in China, and they elected Samuel to be bishop, and he refused. <laughs> so he did not feel he was qualified, and it was not where his interest laid. And quite frankly, the missionaries in China didn't really want him for a bishop either. They saw his gift in languages and translations, not in leading uh, other clergy. So one year later, at another meeting of the House of Bishops, they read his letter uh, of refusal, and he once again elected him bishop. And this time, they sent him the news with three men that he respected and held in high regard in order to convince him. And ultimately, he accepted. He let it be known that as bishop, he would want to start a college for Chinese students to develop a steady stream of clergy and lay leaders who were both educated and Christian. 
and at first he did not get the funding until he threatened to refuse to become the bishop and then miraculously the money came through. Now at age 50, he became paralyzed and had to leave China. He was unable to move anything but one finger of one hand and he could only speak with great difficulty. In spite of this, he sat at his typewriter for the next 20 years, typing over 2,000 pages with what the one finger he could move, working an average of nine hours a day. In this way, he translated the entire Bible into Wenli, which is the literary language of all educated people in China. The school he started, St. John's College, became one of the premier English language institutions of higher learning in China. The Bibles he translated brought Christianity within the reach of so many people. But his story is also an example to us of the opportunity to continue serving God and ministering to others in spite of challenges we might experience. His body had failed him except for one finger, but his mind was still excellent. He found a way to contribute, a way to use the gifts God had given him, and to do the work he loved. I'm going to read, uh, in a minute I'm going to read the entire collect for Samuel, but I think the last sentence of this really carries an important message to us. It says, lead us, we pray, to commit our lives and talents to you in a confidence that when you give your servants any work to do, you also supply the strength to do it. He died at age 75, living the last third of his life as a physically disabled man, but he focused on what he was able to do. I hope Samuel's story comes to mind when I think about things I can't do anymore or never could, and that he inspires me to focus on what I can. And I hope that works for you as well. Amen. Amen. Continue with the Apostles' Creed found on page 96. Together. I believe God, heaven and earth. suffrage A on the bottom of page 97. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your people sing with joy. 
Give peace, O oh Lord, in all the world. For all we need you and the good and safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, in your providence, you called Joseph Cherzyszewski from his home in Eastern Europe to minister in this church and sent him as a missionary to China, upholding him in his infirmity, that he might translate the Holy Scriptures into languages of that land. Lead us, we pray, to commit our lives and talents to you. In the confidence that when you give your servants any work to do, you also supply the strength to do it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, drive us far, drive us, excuse me, drive far from us all wrong, wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into a, the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, Rejoice to give thanks to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and, and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us read the prayer on the bottom of page 100. Together. O oh God, God, you have made of one blood all of the people of the earth, and sent your blessed, blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may see death Find. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and make this the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will read together uh, the general thanksgiving on the next page. Almighty oh God, God, Father of all mercies, we are the worthy servants to give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. Us, us and to all humanity. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of our mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your grace. Not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. We, will, we will pray together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. On page 102. Almighty God, we have given us grace at this time, by the Lord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well beloved Son that when the two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill the mind of the Lord our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth, and every day she come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us
let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you. And all of you. Peace. Peace. In the, give a wave to the people at home. Thank <laughs> you.